We're here in Ancona, Italy at the Messi and Poloni factory with my good friend Stefano Messi. In this video, we're going to take a look at how coaxial cable is made, specifically how the foam dielectric is applied to the core of the coaxial cable, this time on Ham Radio Tube. So here is where it all begins. We have got a spool, a big spool, it's about 500 kilograms and uh, it, uh, it says, uh, we are rolling the solid core or the stranded core which is going to form the cable. In this case, in this case we are talking about the stranded core and we can go through here. You see the, the, the core is passing several times in order to be straightened as much as possible. Then it's passing through here and here we have got the laser gauge and by means, of, by means of the laser gauge we can check out and record which is the actual size of the stranded core or the solid core. And uh, if there is any sort of uh, imperfection the machine will stop immediately. Over here we are making a, a short circuit. point. So we are uh, raising the temperature of the wire up to 100, 110 degrees Celsius because when the solid core or the stranded core enters in the extrusion head it has to have approximately the same temperature of the extrusion head. You can see the extrusion head and there are one, two and three extruders which are extruding at the same time. Let us go behind and I'll show you the bigger one, the one which is making the foam polyethylene with physical and high pressure injection. Did you know that viewers of Ham Radio Tube can save 10% off all your Messi and Poloni purchases? You can either order from Gigaparts or directly from Messi and Poloni. United States and Canada orders also directly from Messi and Poloni will get free shipping. All you have to do is use code KNMRD at checkout. So you can see here there are some nitrogen gas tanks. From, from the tanks, the gas is, uh, is, uh, is brought by means of this tube inside here and here we are, uh, we are increasing the pressure to, uh, to several atmospheres, could be uh, up to 250 atmospheres, so it's a very, very high pressure. From this machine, through this a little, little hose, this little iron tube, uh, we are going there, where you see all, uh, all that, 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 uh, that heat sink, you know, right in the middle of the extruder, this is the extruder, so it goes inside the heat sink and there are, with this high pressure, 250 atmospheres of high pressure, we are injecting in, our, in the polyethylene so that the, well, there will be formed some bubbles. So the polyethylene is inside here. So there is a, a tube with a vac which makes a vacuum and the vacuum is going over there and uh, in the upper part of the funnel there, are, uh, it, there is a heater which gets rid of any sort of moisture condensation which we might have in the night, you know? So every season the polyethylene must be exactly dry. So no, no matter what is the temperature, no matter which is, which is the humidity, it has to be 100% dry so that we can have a real standard. And uh, from there, the polyethylene gets down to the another funnel and then to another funnel and then the granules of PVC, no, in this case of polyethylene, sorry, the granules go in, right inside the extruder. And in the extruder, we have got something like that. It's a big screw and with a, with a different sort of thread. That is our, this, these are the threads for making RG213 use, which is a, a solid polyethylene dielectric. For the foam polyethylene, we need a different shape of the thread. So the one which is exactly inside the extruder in this moment. Here, in, We've got two more extruders. The first one is, uh, is posing a very thin layer of a plain polyethylene over the dielectric. 
so that the dielectric and, uh, and the core, they will not detach when you are flying the cable, we are bending the cable. It has not to detach from the core. Then the big extruder is making the foam and this other extruder is making an external layer, another very thin layer, which is making the waterproofing of the dielectric. Here, we've got the diameter gauge. So uh, we are checking out on two axes uh, how much is the how overall diameter of the dielectric and the tolerance has to be extremely tight. These are the operational control. Here we are operating. And, uh, and here we are checking out about the diameter. We are checking out a lot of parameters. Here, in this machine, we can check out during manufacturing, we can check, check out exactly the concentricity of uh, the core on the dielectric. So we, we, can, we can be sure that we are going to have a great concentricity, which is very important, very important for the overall performance of the cable. This is one of the reasons why we don't want the people to squeeze the cable, to trample on the cable, to kink the cable, to pass with a pickup truck over the cable. Okay, as you can see, the tolerances as they have to be extremely tight. Here we are talking about a, a, a hundredth of a millimeter or one thousandth of a millimeter. So there are very, very tight tolerances. The tolerances can be 0.05 millimeter plus minus on the small cables or 0.10 millimeters on the big ones. Now we have the cooling here. So the, the diameter of the dielectric is checked out by a laser and it's a two axis laser and it will, uh, will check out the real diameter of the dielectric and immediately afterwards it gets in the cooling. The cooling here, there's a very, very long pool and the, and the water is conditioned so that we shall have the same temperature in winter and summer. It can be very hot here, especially with the, with the heat generated by the machinery. So we can have 104 Fahrenheit here. So it's a, a, a absolutely important to have the same exact temperature of the water. It's a very, very long cooling actually. We do need to cool as much as possible without any bend in between. So here, there is a capacitance gauge. So with the capacitance gauge, we can check out how much the expansion we have on the dielectric. So according to the capacitance, we know it's going to be a high performing or a not high performing cable. So we are checking it online. Uh, here we have got the hair dryer. So, uh, so it's a blowing some air in order to get rid of the bubbles, the water bubbles, after the cooling. So the, the pool has to be uh, uh, water conditioned. So we must have exactly the same temperature in winter and summer. Here in summer, with the heat, the, I mean, let us say, uh, the overall heat to be uh, 38, 39 degrees Celsius, which is approximately 104 Fahrenheit. You know, and with, uh, with, the, with the heat of the machinery, it can arrive up to 104 Fahrenheit. So we really do need in summer to cool the pool so that we have a standard. And here we have an air blower to get rid of the bubbles, of the water bubbles, because when it's passing through here or through here, where we have another uh, laser gauge on two axes, we, we need to not to have any, any drops. Otherwise, the drops will be detected and the machine will go in alarm. The, the wire then is passing through this, this machine, which is called capstan. It's a sort of caterpillar. So it's a pulling the cable gently without squeezing it. And the cable is passing through a spark tester. The spark testers is where we have several kilovolts and uh, is a, there is a corona effect. So the cable, in this case the dielectric is passing through the corona and uh, if there is any hole it will be detected and will be an alarm. Then 
Here's the sensor system of compensation. And uh, here we are gathering all the dielectric, which will be automatically moved from here to there as soon as the bobbin will be, will be full. So now that we know how the high pressure triple layer foam dielectric is applied to the core of the coaxial cable, stay tuned for the next video in this series where we're going to take a look at how they apply the shield, the foil, and the braid to the coaxial cable.